I am uh, Apostle April. Welcome to Pastoral Talk. Tonight we're going to be talking about signs and wonders. This is very exciting. Um, I'm going to be talking about things that help you to get through your next level, things that is going to, that is going to help you in your prayer life, things that are going to help you to be able to siege the enemy. Tonight is going to be very revolutionizing because we are going to talk strategic devices. We are going to talk the word of God to where he will bring you insight, revelation, understanding and manifestation to your life and to your situations. So I just want to start off by saying welcome. And also that this particular point that we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to start with identity because identity always plays a major aspect, a major role in who you are in God. And that is where the first area where the enemy would try to attack you because if he's able to attack your identity, then he's able to take your faith and he's able to take your belief. And you will walk in, you'll be walking in a world of wonder, of confusion, and you will never be able to walk in your true destiny and purpose of where God has called you to operate. So tonight we are going to start with identity again. So identity is something where we are have a foundation of who God is in us. And this is a prime example of what I mean. God had Christ. Christ is someone who is a definite, uh, we call mentor, a spiritual father, brother, Christ. He is someone who was not exempt when it came to the enemy attacking him. So if the enemy was, a, was able to attack Christ and continue to, to take down his identity, well, then what makes us any different? This is a true thing right here. Because what we look at when we talk about Matthew, we look at Jesus and how in the time where Jesus was tempted before he went into the, when he went into the forest to get um, tested, a lot of people say, well, he was tempted three times. But I say... He was tempted one time off the same thing, which was his identity. Now, and what do I mean by that? When it came to the enemy tempting Christ, it always said, if you are the son of God, then turn this bread into, turn this stone into bread. If you are the son of God, then come on, jump off this pinnacle and ask the angel of the Lord to catch you. If you are the son of God, everything pointed back to if you are the son of God. So that actually tells me that it was all per concerning his identity. It wasn't that he was tempted three times. It was three attempts that he used to try to destroy his identity. But this is what God is saying to you today. You have to know who you are in him that you are able to operate in the power and the authority thereof. The same as Paul, the same as Peter, the same as Ananias, the same as all who actually were the disciples after Christ. This is a powerful thing right now, people of God. And this is very important that you grab hold to this because God will have a word for you tonight. Tonight we are going to talk about signs and wonders, and we also want to talk about tools on prayer, how to defeat the enemy, how to come against the enemy. Have you ever been tired of trying to, to fight against the enemy and he always seemed to win? That is something where we are going to reverse tonight because we are going to siege the enemy in the name of Jesus because you have been given the just and the right and the authority to do so. So tonight we are going to come out of the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is a, guy, is a guy who God had prompted and commissioned to do his purpose as a visionary, as a prophet. And at the time that he walked, he started off as a priest. And this is something that's very awesome because his name alone means to be strengthened. And he was a person that had to be strengthened to be able to do his calling because God had him in a very tough area every time. And it's a hard walk. Being a Christian is not an easy walk. It's not something to say, well, when I get saved, I thought it was going to be easier. Actually, the Bible says that we are going to be, we're going to be crucified. We are going to have to suffer persecution. That we will have to go through these things. So the best way to do this is to get an understanding of the word of God, get revelation, and get the tools to be able to fight effectively. Because Paul says, do not be conceived of Satan devices. We have to understand how he worked and what he do to us and how we have to come about it. The Bible also says that we are able to speak to mountains and make those mountains move. Now, this is the thing. It's not a mountain that when you look outside, you just say mountain move. I remember my husband did that. It was very funny. He says move mountain, but it's not the physical mountain of which Jesus was speaking of. It is a physical, it's a spiritual mountain. It is your situation. It is your circumstance. It is your problem. It is you. It is something that 
the enemy is trying to compel you to try to keep you from God. And that one thing, that mountain can be your identity to where he's bringing confusion. That could be your mountain. It could be depression. That could be your mountain. It can be suicidal thoughts. It can be loneliness. That can be your mountain. But God said you are not lonely because once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he said he dwells in you. So therefore, if he dwells in you, you cannot be lonely because the Spirit of God is with you. He said, I am with you at all times. Even though when you feel alone, he is always with you. So this is something I have to set this foundation, people of God, because we have to understand that God loves us. He loves us to the point to where he wants us to walk in his image. He wants us to walk in his likeness. He wants us to walk in his power. So, so much to where he sent his only begotten son to use as an example to say, see, if Christ was able to not be, even though he was tempted, he didn't say yes to the temptation, but he operated out of power and said, get behind me, Satan, and said, but the word of God says, this is instructions for you today. So this is where we are going to start at, to understand who you are as a person, who you are as a spirit, who you are when it comes to operating in the power of the Lord. So let's go right into it. So we're going to go in, into Ezekiel. Now, Ezekiel, we're going to come out of the book of Ezekiel 4. Again, Ezekiel is a man or was a man of vision. I love Ezekiel because he's a man after my own heart. And I mean that literally. <laughs> That's funny. But for the most part, Ezekiel had a, very, a strategy which God had given him that he was listening. He was uh, always uh, had his ears open to the voice of God to where he wanted to know the heart of God the movement of God, the impression of God. So he was so sensitive in the spirit to where signs and wonders actually manifested. Because he was so sensitive and he was obedient to the word of God, that signs and wonders was all around him at all times. It's always around you too, but it's the little things that we don't see that actually is a miracle that actually occurred. Because if you do something in the obedience out of God's voice, you got to go back and ask God, Lord, give me confirmation. Show me that what you just told me is going to manifest. That way it would increase my faith. That way I can do more. I can prophesy. I can speak the prophetic word. I can have the things of which you have called me to operate in me. And I can do it boldly without reproach. I can do it boldly without fear. I can do it boldly with the results of who you are in me. So when we're talking about Ezekiel, the Bible was talking about in Ezekiel 4, how he was coming to, to, to free Israel because of all the sins and all the things that they, that they have encountered of God. Because they was practicing idolatry. They was uh, practicing a uh, different type of um, crucifixions of like children, sacrifices of children. They were doing things out of the term and out of the order of what God actually ordained this world to function in. So they were going out of the way of God. That's called an unclean spirit. That's operating in the spirit of wickedness. And God was calling them back into a place because even though he's a God of judgment, he is our God of love. And he loved them so much that he sent someone in place to carry the burden for them. So this is where we're going with this because it talks about prayer. And again, in this prayer, it talked about signs and wonders. So let's just jump right into that. So Ezekiel 4, it says that, I'm going to read it. Now you, and this is the Amplified Version, now you, son of man, take a brick. Place it before you inscribe, and inscribe on it the city of Jerusalem. And inscribe means to write a diaphragm, draw a diaphragm, draw a picture to where you can be able to um, understand what God is saying. And I'm going to take it line upon line and precept, over, uh, pre precept upon precept because this is teaching tonight more than preaching. So I want you to get it. This is not a message to where it's going to deliver you to where I want you to just be like, oh, praise the Lord. I want you to be able to say, man, God gave me revelation. So I want you to take your time. Write it down. Understand what the word of God is speaking to you. The same way he spoke to me, he might speak to you differently. But if you write it down, you can always go back to it and you can ask God, what did you mean by this? So Ezekiel, again, he told, God told him, write, draw this on a brick. And, get, and then I'm going to give you the next instructions. He said, and then, verse 2, lay siege against it. So this is what God is saying. When you are in a situation, when you have things going on in your life and you don't know what else to do, God says, write it down like the book of a bet. Write your vision. Make it plain because God is giving you strategies tonight on what to do. Now, what he told Ezekiel to do was to write these instructions, write this diaphragm on a brick, and then... 
go and attack the enemy. So tonight, we are going to siege the enemy, and I'm teaching you how to siege the enemy. Your first instruction is to write down everything that has been taken from you. If it was your children, it was your finances, if it was your marriage, if it was your identity, if it's mirrored to materialistic things, whatever it might be, the God is saying, write it down. And then we're going to siege the enemy. And that's what the word of God says. It says, then lay siege means isolate, attack. Okay? Now we're going to jump to verse 4 because I don't want to go and, and give you the whole story. So we're going to paraphrase a little bit. It says, verse 4, 4-4, four, four. then after you write it down, and you get ready to attack the enemy, this is what he wants you to do. Lie down on your left side toward the north to bear symbolically, I'm going to come back to that, keep your finger there, symbolically the wickedness and punishment of the house of Israel. You shall bear their wickedness of punishment for the number of days that you lie on your side. You shall bear the punishment and wickedness for the number of days as long as you lay on your, as long as you lay on your side. Now, this is the part that, that is very interesting because God told Ezekiel to lay on his left side for 390 days to be able to free Israel from the punishment and wickedness that they have encountered against God. Now, this is where I'm going to bring it back to you because it says symbolically. Symbolically means first that is natural, then that is spiritual. So what he meant by that is pray. Put the paper before you. All that you have written down is, is called a petition. That you're ready to take back, you're going to put that before you and you're going to lay prostrate on the floor. It can go to the north, it can go to the east, it can go to the south, and it can go to the west. But for you, symbolically, lay on the side means to kneel. It means to bow down. It means to get a position of prayer. And the Bible, this is the interesting part, because it says that each year is going to be a day. It says, in verse 4, 6, it says, each year is assigned to you one day. So one day is assigned to a year, just to make it more clear. One day is assigned to a year. So every year that the enemy has taken from you, however long your children has been gone, if it's been two years, if it's been three years, Every year is going to represent a day. So that means three days you are going to be able to siege the enemy to repossess everything that the enemy has taken from you three years ago. Are you getting this? This is what God, this is the word of God. This is not what Apostle Abel is saying. This is not what I'm just coming up with. I'm reading the word of God so you can understand that he said my word is true and that he watch over his words perform it. So these are instructions on how you're going to seize the enemy. You're going to now reverse what he normally does is attack you. And now you're about to attack him. And this is the way that you attack him by understanding the instructions of the Lord. He said to write it down, to put it before you. Now go into a place of prayer. And now every year that the enemy has taken from you, this is what you're going to do. You're going to fast. You're going to pray. Uh, now, we're going to talk about fasting, but it's different ways to do it. I'm going to always say, just to keep it simple, a Daniel fast. It will be something that is something that takes priority over your life, over God. Now, don't go on a liquid fast because that's a divine calling. That's something that God calls you to. So we're going to fast, a Daniel fast. And every year that the enemy has taken from your life, each day, so if you fast, for an example, for seven days, that will cancel out seven years that the enemy has taken from you. Come on, somebody. This is the word of the Lord. You cannot reject the word of the Lord. This is power. This is anointed. This will manifest in your life. And then and in verse four, um, chapter 4, verse 7, this is what you're going to do after you do the part of laying or praying. He says, then you shall set your face toward and siege, toward the siege of Jerusalem with your arm bared and prophesy to it. That's the key. He said, you will set your face toward the enemy and you're going to prophesy to it. So therefore, you're going to speak the word of God over your situation. You're going to decree, declare a thing, and it shall be established. You're going to reclaim everything that the enemy has taken from you. Just as they had sieged the, they had, um, the Jericho wall had to come down. 
I'm just going to declare that right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you right now that everything that the enemy has taken from your children, Father God, that they are going to repossess their possession. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that every Jericho wall in their life must come down now in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak your word. We speak your freedom. We speak your miracles. We speak your revelation and your insight over every situation that has happened in their lives that the enemy has chained them up, that has put them in bondage, that put them, Father God, in confusion. We break that now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's continue because the word of God is true. Now, when we talk about signs and wonders, when you take this step, when you take this, this position, you are now operating in signs and wonders. You are operating in the full manifestation of God. You are operating in the nine gifts of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit will use you in one of those nine gifts, if not all of those nine gifts. It could be the revelation gifts, which is the discerning of spirits, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. It can be the power gifts, which is miracle, faith, it can be um, actual um, signs and wonders. I'm trying to, I just lost my thought. It can be miracle. It can be faith. And then we have actual, um, the inspirational gifts, which is tongues, prophecy, and interpretation of tongues. I know I missed one. My mind went blank, but I think I can't stop. I'm going to keep it pushing. But I encourage you, Galatians, look it up. I mean, First Corinthians, look it up and see what Paul was talking about when it came to the nine gifts of the Spirit. So, therefore, we will understand the true um, gifts of what they all consist of. Now, you might say, well, I operate in these particular gifts, but I don't know what I should do with these gifts. You have to seek the word of God first. You have to know how it applied in the ancient times and how it applied to the New Testament. Because everyone in, the, in these stories is nothing new under the sun the way God used them. They were all operating in these particular gifts. So when it came to the gifts, um, the revelation gifts, the gifts of knowledge and the, and the gifts of wisdom, that was profoundly used. Now, when you operate a pro prophecy, Paul says, out of all the gifts, desire to prophesy. This is what one of the things that he have encouraged us to do. Why? Because prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. So if you say, well, I prophesy, if you say, well, I have these, I operate in these gifts. Are you studying the word of God? Because if you're not studying the word of God, then there's no way you prophesy out of, the, out of the word of God. That means that you are proper lying. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's false prophet. That's false, that's, that's false teaching. And God wants you to be able to operate in the true aspect and the true inspiration of his word. You have to know who Christ is. And the only way to know who Christ is, is to study the word of God. Because the Bible says in John, he said the word became flesh. And the word walked among us. So therefore, if you don't read this word, that means that you're not understanding who God is. And you don't understand who you are. So therefore, your identity will continue to be attacked. And the enemy will continue to keep you delayed from your destiny. And you don't want to die without knowing who you are. You don't want to die without knowing that you didn't complete what God put you here for. We want to all operate out of, together as a body. As Paul says, that we are coming to be a body of believers. We've been, we're coming to build the body of believers. We're not coming to build buildings. It's bodies of believers. We're coming to gather souls. We're coming to be bring people who was lost back to Christ. People who fell off the boat and they don't know. and They, they got hurt. They got frustrated. They got confused. It's us who are to draw them back in with the love of Christ. But the only way to do that is to be right yourself. You can't be operating out of depression or confusion trying to bring somebody to God. Because what the enemy would do is use that same thing that you think you operate so heavily in, and he will use it against you. This is something very powerful I wanted to share with you, which is a testimony. And this testimony is, we last night um, I was at one of our other um, networks. And this particular area is it's a, a group of people who is looking to know God. And this is where it's called evangelism. Because you bring Christ, you bring the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding the gospel to the areas of which it is not. So therefore, we have to bring, we have to be the light. We have to be the word. We have to be the only, we might be the only word that they will ever witness. So we know that if we know the word and we have faith in that word, then we'll be able to, to show and identify and manifest those signs and wonders as well as miracles. 
just as Paul did in Acts um, 19. He said that God said that he operated in extraordinary, unusual, and did unusual miracles. Now, it was dunamis because it said extraordinary, and it was miracles. Miracles in Greek mean dunamis. That means dunamis, people. What is dunamis? That's power. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power that's in you. Because in Acts, the Bible says that Christ said that he had to go to God. He had to go back into heaven in order for the Holy Spirit to come into us. So by him ascending, he allowed the Holy Spirit to descend into us. So that is our gift. So you operate in the power of the Holy Spirit each and every day. So as long as you believe that the Holy Spirit is in you, then you will see miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, this is a powerful thing because we prophesied to them. We spoke a prophetic word over them. We prayed for them. And they was in a place to where all did not receive. Even some things manifested. Come on, somebody. The enemy don't like the, the Spirit of God moving because if, that, if the Spirit of God is moving, that means that they're no longer under his control. So he don't like prophetic people. But see, God called all of us to be prophetic. It's not that I'm just sitting here saying I'm an apostle Abel I'm just a prophetic thing in this world. That is not how it works. I am a part of the body of God, not coming to instruct and teach you on how to be prophetic too. Because God called you to be prophetic just as I am prophetic. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, desire the gifts. And that you may prophesy. That means we are all called to operate in that prophetic gift. So I encourage you to seek God in his word. That way you will have a full manifestation of his power. And you will not have to look and see signs and wonders before you believe. I just said something right there. Don't wait to see the signs and wonders and then you believe. Because that's for myself. When we prayed and prophesied over these people, this particular lady, and she is so cute. I love her to death. And I won't say her name, but she was a woman who actually had this. She, she, she's an 81-year-old woman. I can't say that. And she had a vision problem, spiritually and physically. And so she wanted prayer. Now, mind you, she couldn't speak English. There was an interpreter. But this is how God works. The Holy Spirit can speak all language. Come on, somebody. When God wants a movement to happen, the movement is going to happen. And so when we prayed, we prayed for her. And I prayed that her vision would be set free, but not only her physical vision, but her spiritual vision. And so this is something that actually was very good and awesome because she, she had a testimony. And said so that she starts seeing not just her regular eyes, but she started having visions. And she shared her visions with us. And that was a full-blown confirmation that the Spirit of the Lord was present at that time. That he manifested in her life. That was a sign and wonder that happened. So God is showing himself manifesting in the world every day. But it takes believers. It takes people of faith to be able to operate in that power that God has already instilled in us. He didn't just give us dominion over this world to say that we are weak and we are worthless. He gave us dominion over this world because we are kings and queens and we are here to rule in this world and in this realm. So this is something that God wants us to be in tune with in him that we will grow even more in power. That we will never question what the enemy tried to make us think we are any longer. You are not depression. You are not hurt. You are not broken. You are not abandoned. You are not abused. You are not what the enemy has told you. So I'm going to pray before we close because I'm coming to the end of this time right now. So I'm just going to release the word of God upon your life. Father, we just thank you right now for this word that has went forth, Father God. We thank you that you have given your children the power and the authority to seize the enemy, God. To come against the enemy camp, Father God, to, re to repossess everything that he has taken from their lives, their children, their finances, their homes, their marriages, their minds, their identity, God. I command in the name of Jesus that everything must be returned to them now in the name of Jesus. I bind satanic harassment. I rebuke satanic concentration. And I take authority over every demonic force that comes into their life. I thank you, Lord, that every diabolical assignment in their life is canceled in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I pray right now that you release only divine, inspirational, Father God, spirit in their life. That they will be able to grow in the direction and revelation of you and in who you are. You are the mighty God. You are the ultimate God. You are the God of present. You are the supreme God. You are the God of love. You are the God of healing. You are the God of finances. You are the God of breakthrough. You are God. And Father, so we just thank you. And we just look forward to what you are going to do in their life. So I just thank you tonight, people of God, for tuning in. It was a blessing to be able to teach you this word. It was revolutionizing the things of God. So I just thank you for tuning in and just come and tune in more. There is going to be more teachings. There's going to be more um, strategies. There's going to be more tools. There's going to be more revelation where God wants to speak into your life, specifically for you. 
So I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for tuning in to Signs and Wonders. See you next time.